Good. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to our Advanced to Apprenticeship March advisory meeting for the Rochester area. I am recording this so that we will be able to share it out with the folks who weren't able to make it here today. But thank you all for being here. We appreciate it very much. So Advanced Apprenticeship, we are springing into action to continue um, with cohorts in our Rochester area. We also have our project happening in the Mohawk Valley area as well. I am Brandy Solomon. I am joined. I am the Employment Project Coordinator for Advanced to Apprenticeship, and I am joined by Kat Douse, who is our MACNI consultant, Mary Lee, who also works with me at the Strong Center for Development for De <laughs> the Strong Center for Developmental Disabilities, and she is the Director of Employment. And we also have Colleen here, who is the Manager of Apprenticeships and Workforce um, Development for MACNI as well. So Advanced to Apprenticeship, as you know, is all about pre-apprenticeship opportunities. In 2019, the project underwent some modifications, but we were able to begin those pr promotions for the Center for Workforce Development pushing courses in the summer of 2023. And currently we have our first Advanced to Apprenticeship student enrolled with the Center for Workforce Development. So the goal from pre-apprenticeship training is employment and employment leading into apprenticeship opportunities that promotes a person's ability to advance in their career. Since our last meeting in December, we were able to hold preview classes in machining and welding at the Center for Workforce Development. We also hosted our business networking opportunity at Delmonico's hosted by RTMA, which is our Rochester Technology and Manufacturing Association. Some of the businesses in attendance included Optimax, Next Up, and Jamestown Container, to name a few. In February, we started the month off with our Embracing Greater Diversity in the Workplace webinar. We were able to be hosted through RTMA once again, and in collaboration with Jen Geiger, our business rep through Access VR, we were able to give a great training to many businesses in the Rochester area. I do wanna give a shout out to Rich from RTMA for your support with hosting those events and making sure that businesses were brought to the table for networking and learning opportunities. Also in February, we were able to host our instructor neurodiversity training at the Center for Workforce Development. And the Universal Design Learning Team was able to give them information in real time about how they could create their curriculum for their different programs with diverse learners in mind. And one of the attendees, one of the instructors gave us um, a comment on the satisfaction survey at the end saying that they enjoyed a new way of looking at neurodiversity. So it is clear from our training in the Mohawk area as well as Rochester that instructors are definitely looking for more learning opportunities for diverse learning students. So like I was saying, the Center for Workforce Development spring classes are in session. For advanced to apprenticeship, we had the ability to push into machining, fundamentals, manufacturing, technician course, as well as welding. And we're very excited that we have a A2A advanced to apprenticeship student that is in the welding class right now. And that student is very exciting with their opportunity to be trained that then leads to employment. They're also taking support classes to supplement the, their learning and being connected to Rochester Works for the support of the Disability Resource Coordinator in addition to VR, access VR supports. So really getting that wraparound support that we've been promoting to make sure that they can be successful in the course. So what's next? Well, the end of this month makes the end of year three of our project. And year four begins on April 1st. It's not an April Fool's joke. <laughs> we will be going into year four 
And as a part of the extension of this project, we will continue to support our training programs with recruitment and make sure that everyone is aware that both regions are hosting courses both in the spring and the fall. We will continue to support all of our partners with building that sustainability and communicating about the project widely. So at the Center for Workforce Development, we are currently in spring classes, but also recruiting and enrolling for fall 2024. Classes are anticipated to start in September and the final dates are being ironed out. And we are aware that we will continue to push into those manufacturing courses of machining, industrial operator, which is also known as manufacturing technician, as well as welding. And we are, uh, we are basically making sure that at this time, everyone knows that the course is continuing for the fall and A2A is continuing to be a part of it. And potential applications have the opportunity to take the TAE, which is that basic adult, um, adult basic education assessment, which is an indicator for enrollment. They can take that now in anticipation of the fall. We are also looking to potentially expand into additional training areas that CWD offers like construction, transportation, and or health careers. On Thursday, March 14th, we will be introducing advanced to apprenticeship to the general student body that is enrolled in all of the different manufacturing courses that they hold there, giving them the opportunity to learn about the supports that are available through not only advanced to apprenticeship, but with Lindsay Murphy, who is our Disability Resource Coordinator for Rochester Works. And on April 11th, CWD will be holding an open house for all of the courses that they have. And if you know someone who may be interested in advance to apprenticeship, making sure you give them my contact information so that we can start that conversation and interest application and get them on their way. So in year four, we are supporting our partners through evaluating the design with the existing educational partners that we have at CWD and Mohawk Valley Community College and implementing changes accordingly. We are also building sustainability and that looks like solidifying the connection that we have made with the career and tech education system in Rochester, making sure that the resources that they already provide to students include people with disabilities, including IDD, and that they are aware that this opportunity exists. So with this support ongoing, even as the Strong Center for Developmental Disability fades. So in the Mohawk Valley area, we are very excited to announce some great news. And we have Colleen here to share that news with all of you. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Colleen Black. I work for MACME um, and wanted to share with you today that the Advanced to Apprenticeship program was um, uh, approved as a direct entry provider for pre-apprenticeship through the New York State Department of Labor. Um, so that is some, the program can now be added to affirmative action plans for um, group sponsors or sponsors of a registered apprenticeship they would like to utilize the advanced to apprenticeship program for recruitment of their um, registered apprenticeship uh, programs. So it's a big deal. It opens up funding um, for future cohorts for advanced to apprenticeship. Um, but there are some stipulations that come with uh, it being a direct entry program, including um, not being able to charge uh, participants for uh, tuition um, to attend the program. So there will be some changes that come along with this becoming a direct entry program um, that I guess we'll, we'll probably get into a little bit later once we um, we do some more planning and <laughs> figure out exactly how we're going to move forward. But it is a big deal. Um, we are really excited about it. And um, members of our Manufacturers Alliance through the state of New York are able to add um, advanced to apprenticeship now to their affirmative action plans. So that's something that our team might be able to do 
um, Center for Economic Growth, uh, the Council of Industry. Those are our other group sponsors. So we're excited. Thank you, Colleen. We are. It's a great hurrah moment because direct entry literally just got disability added as a category to that application. And our team was able to jump right in. Thank you very much, Colleen and Matthew and Pat and everybody for making that happen for Advanced to Apprenticeships future cohorts to come. So as we continue in year four, we will be looking to share the model of Advanced to Apprenticeship widely. We have been lucky to already been in talks with Switchy, which is another project that is going on in New York State, which is all about sub minimum wage transitioning into competitive integrated employment. So there is an initiative in many areas across the state to support people who are making sub men with new opportunities for competitive integrated employment. And we have the green light to offer advanced to apprenticeship in the Rochester area as one of those potential options a person can go into. We are also um, very excited to be gearing up for our Fuse Hub presentation as well, which is a podcast that will be shared throughout the state. And we're looking to present nationally and statewide at APSE and additional conference opportunities to share the information. We're also going to be initiating a statewide coalition that coalition is looking to convene manufacturing programs that offer support to people with disabilities and to build that, that statewide so that we can discuss collective, collectively how we can evaluate, evaluate and elevate outcomes for people with disabilities in the manufacturing space. We are going to continue with educating training sites Right now we have MVCC and CWD, but that may expand into other areas. We're gonna continue educating businesses that will support the creation of employment opportunities in a different way, right? So there may be the opportunity to customize jobs for folks looking to get into manufacturing, as well as ensuring they have that direct linkage into apprenticeship. We're also looking to involve youth with disabilities, their families and special education teachers in manufacturing exploration to engage younger students in apprenticeship exposure and pathways. So as a part of our advisory council committee, we always have our call to action and that call to action continues to be to share about events, advanced to apprenticeship helping us with that marketing support. We know word of mouth is very strong. You may be having conversations with folks who are like, I don't know what my son's gonna do after graduation. Well, we might be an option. Let us know about that person. Give them my email and we can definitely continue that conversation. As well as community fairs, we're already signed up for some, but if there are others that either you are hosting or aware of, let us know. And if we're not signed up and it makes sense for Advanced Apprenticeship to be there, we will be there. Um, so, as of course, we have promotional information and materials that we can share with you all to be able to disperse widely, as well as our great promotional video that continues to display our goal of Advanced to Apprenticeship, which is all about employment. At this time, we'll take some questions or any thoughts that our attendees may have. And for those who are watching on the recording, if you have any questions or thoughts, please feel free to email me, Brandy Solomon. I am Brandy underscore Solomon at urmc.rochester.edu. Thank you. Any questions, team? No questions, but I just wanted to um... Also share that uh, Manufacturers Alliance has prepared a couple of training programs um, coming up in Mar March 26th and then again in April. And um, we'll make sure that those flyers are sent to all of you in order to encourage businesses that you're working with, um, whether they be manufacturing businesses or beyond. Um, it will, the, the speakers are talking about the value of hiring 
um, and including people with disabilities as part of your workforce, and also how to affect um, your bottom line as a business in regards to making sure that diversity is always a part of what you do. Thank you. There it is. Um, so we'll make sure that that is also sent out individually. And I was um, obviously, Lee being our, our one and only in-person guest, um, if indeed this is something you think that um, your business council might value, we would very much appreciate you sending it out to them in order to that it's free and um, we're just trying to make sure that in the same way that we're looking at universal design thinking and training to instructors that we're also now through MACNI inviting people to learn more about the value of diversity. And I'm confident you guys have been doing this anyway. So here's just another bite at the apple using um, Frank Fallaton, the president of Fallot Technologies and one of his um, uh, employees who was part of the STEP program and then Wendy um, Strobel Goer from um, Cornell to talk about the uh, accessibility issues, but from a business vantage point. So would love for you to help us market that if you would, please. Pat, uh, we could certainly share that. Um, I, I would just need to get a copy of the flyer. Yeah, I will send it out via the, the, the group. Okay, wonderful. Um, yep, wonderful. Colleen was able to share that with me just yesterday. So. Um, and then the, you talked a little bit, Brandy, about uh, our, our connection to Fuse Hub. We're excited, too, that um, uh, Steve Melito is going to do a podcast with us, which is kind of cool. You know, we're going to get to market what we do and why we do it uh, from their vantage point, too. So um, it's getting some exposure that we, I guess, uh, never thought we would. And here we are doing all these really cool things. So thank you all very much for the support you've given us thus far in the first three years and stay with us for the next two as we complete what it is we need to do and work better and stronger with MACNI um, under the auspices of our direct entry um, sponsorship now. Cool. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs>